if you're interested in accomplishing all your goals, not just one or two of them, not just hit or miss of accomplishing everything you set your mind to, pay attention to this upcoming video. Let's go. Hey gang, how's it going? Russell Westcott here. So special treat for you in this upcoming video. I broke into the vault to bring out this video. This was a training video that I provided to a very high level elite group of real estate investors. We talked about goal setting. We, I identified a brand new system for them called the RPM method. I'm now releasing this video to the general public on my YouTube channel. So you're in for a special treat. If you're interested in accomplishing your goals, hitting them with certainty, hitting them with velocity, pay attention to this upcoming framework. This is a deep dive look into how you set your goals, how you establish your vision, right down to your daily activities and how are your daily activities in alignment with your core values and your vision and all your goals. More coming up, you will thoroughly love this video. All right, let's get after it. Um, I'm gonna share with you part of my own personal resources. I'm gonna share with you some of the resources I have. Some of them I don't use, but I think I know they're very good, okay? So I'm gonna give you a, a little bit of mix mash of um, theory, uh, but mostly my practical experiences of things that I do personally, okay? So that's what we're gonna dive into. Okay, so guys, welcome here tonight. We, we have, I have a brand, like I said, it's a brand new presentation. Um, and you know how, how how much of a fan I am of acronyms. So really what we're going to do is we're going to put the RPM into your goal setting process. We're going to put, uh, we're going to add a little horsepower to your, your goal setting process here tonight. And really we, the intention I want to have is really to give you some additional resources for you to enhance what you already do for your goal setting process. So if you do no goal setting, this will be un this will be perfect. If you're all the way to bright and you have them all written down and you review them every day, I'm pretty sure I'm going to share a couple things that can just really enhance it. If you're somewhere in between those, um, there will be definitely a resource or two that I can share here with it. But but one of the things I would say when it comes to um, goal setting is I think most people overthink this. It, it it truly is. I think most people just really overthink the process of goal setting. So think about this in, in a really the most basic terms. What do you want and what are you doing on a daily basis to get it? That, you know, I'm sorry if that's really this, uh, if that's oversimplifying it, but remember I'm from Saskatchewan. We like to keep things simple. What do you want and what are you going to do to get it? That is really the process. And I do not have attachment to if you guys keep, um, you know, a, a paper journal or pieces of scrapbook paper or a diary or a journal or a app on your phone or whatever. I really don't, I'm not attached to that. What I'm more attached is that you are, you do the work and you keep moving forward to accomplish your goals. And if somebody ever came to you and says, well, let's, let's talk about how close are you to your goals. And here's what I, here's what I do with a lot of people. I challenge people a lot is I would actually come to you on a daily basis, for example. And I would say, let's just pick, um, I saw Brendan. And I would say, Brendan, what have you done today? Today, what have you done today? What are the five things you've done today to move you closer to your goals, right? And the answer is, I can list them off, or I don't know, or yeah, I'll try better tomorrow, okay? Then the next day, I'll come to the next day. Brendan, what have you done tomorrow? What are you doing today? What are five things you're doing today to get you closer to your goals? Okay, so this is a brand new presentation. You guys are gonna be the first ones to see it. As a matter of fact, I, I, created, I finished it about probably about an hour ago um, because I had just a few more things and a few more resources to put in for everybody here tonight. Um, and here's a quick disclaimer before we really dive headfirst into a lot of this is every one of us will have a different process. We really do. Like, I, I'm not saying mine's better than yours and yours is better than mine and vice versa. And I'm not saying anyone is better than anyone else. What I'm just about here to do, my entire intention tonight is to just share resources and to offer you a framework and a thought process. And what I really want you to do is I want you to make it your own. I want you to own it because um, tonight the I'm going to share with you a whole bunch of resources that I've taken from multiple different people. Um, this isn't by all means not my creation one, one bit, but how I'm bundling it together and how I'm using it 
and how I'm compiling it and how I'm going to be teaching it is 100% my own. Okay. So that's one of the things is, is one of the best things I, I can teach teach you guys is if you want to deepen your learning on something, do it such to a level that you could teach other people on how to do it as well. So as you guys know, I'm a big fan of uh, of frameworks and I'm a big fan of acronyms because I think we all remember acronyms. And if I ever had to go, if my PowerPoint went down, all I would have to remember would be RPM framework. So tonight in this goal setting process, the R stands for rehearsal rehearse, rehearse in advance. Okay. Rehearse is another way of saying that we're going to build our vision. Okay. So R stands for rehearse. The P in the RPM method stands for plan. We are going to do some planning tonight. We're actually going to walk you through um, a, a process on how to do your brainstorming and how to do your planning. And then the M in the RPM means move. We have to do something on a day to day basis. So it's rehearse, plan, move, rehearse, Plan, move, rehearse, plan, move, RPM. And we're going to add some horsepower to this tonight. So as I mentioned, there are many contributors to this presentation tonight. You know, Brendan Bouchard, Tony Robbins, I think everybody has probably got some kind of a contribution to acknowledge to, the, to Big Tony. And, and, and I got multiple books, multiple videos. I actually did. Um, interesting to note, um, I started diving into the Tony Robbins world way back in my university days. And for the, some of you that may know my age, um, we're talking uh, late 80s, early 90s. And so I've been immersed in the Tony Robbins world ever since he was a, he was a young kid. And I was a young kid too. And I actually did the firewalk. I will probably get the date wrong, but I did the firewalk when I first moved to Vancouver. So it probably would have been like 95 or 9, 96. So what are we? Geez, that's 20 some years ago, right? So I've been immersed in this whole world of professional personal development. I love this thing. And for some of you, if you're not sure who Brendan Bouchard is, you will know Brendan Bouchard is a, is a fantastic personal development trainer as well. Um, many of you, if you've been part of the Academy for a while and you saw um, our webinar, now I'll get the number wrong, but I think it was probably eight or nine or 10. Um, I had Les Hewitt out. Les Hewitt is the author of one of my favorite books of all time, and that's The Power of Focus. Um, I'm going to refer to that tonight because there's an incredible goal-setting process and um, and buckets of areas to set your goals in that Les has created, and he's just phenomenal. I actually did coaching with Les for more than two, two solid years, and he's shaped many of the things that I've done in real estate and also personal development as well. Um, there's some other people too, you know, uh, Mike Dillard, David Osborne, Gary Keller, Cameron Harold. These are some people just I, I follow and I, I subscribe to a lot of their, their content material. David Osborne, Gary Keller, they're, they're big realtors. Well, Gary Keller, you know, is the founder of Keller Williams out of the States. David Osborne, I think he's one of the top 10 um, real estate brokerage is in the US. I think they do some like eight or nine billion dollars of transactions per year in as a, as a real estate brokerage. Cameron Harold, for some of you, I will introduce you to Cameron tonight. One of his very good books, Double Double. Um, Cameron was the COO for, I believe it was 1-800-GOT-JUNK with Brian Scudamore out here in Vancouver, a wonderful resource as well. And then a lot of this is just my own personal comp compilation of things that I've pulled together to, to, to have for teach you guys here tonight. Okay, so let's get into this whole thing about rehearsing. And let's get into this whole thing about dreaming a little bit. And in the book, Double Double, it's interesting to note that Cameron Harold, um, he, it, in this book, Double Double, you know, I love the, I love the title is how to double your revenue and profits in three years or less. Um, he talked about, he talks about this thing called a vivid vision. And it was honestly, it was only a one chapter in this book. And Cameron has now since taken that and he has expanded it into an entire book. I have not read vivid vision, the book, but I actually have built and did things from his original book. Uh, on double double. So in that, it talks about, um, you know, creating your vivid vision. Like what is your vision for your business? We're actually going to, so remember, rehearse, dream, rehearse, plan, do. So we're going to start with the big picture. And for some of us, um, entrepreneurs, and I'm looking at myself in the mirror when I say this, 
Um, the dreaming part is not if is the easiest part. As a matter of fact, sometimes my head's so freaking in the clouds so much that my wife has to give me a give me a little slap on the head and say, "Get your feet back on the ground here, boy. What are you dreaming about all this?" So sometimes this first part about creating your vivid vision and dreaming um, will not be difficult. For, for many of us, especially for entrepreneurs and we have big visions and, and things like that. This first thing might not be difficult, but you might not have, you might not have it to a point where you can share it with others. Cause the main thing about this vivid vision that you're going to do is you're going to get it to a point where you can then present it to other people and you're going to share it with other people and you're going to enroll people into your vision with you. Okay, so let's talk about that. So here's a couple of concepts on this vivid vision is number one is you're really just taking a quick look into the future. Um, you are articulating what you can see. You are pitching yourself in a future state. And what you're doing is really this, this whole thing is of rehearsing in advance is actually rooted in science. Now think about this for a second. Um, Many of us have probably have heard the story uh, out there of the, the science experiments of the athletes that, you know, the skiers going down the downhill ski slopes. And what they do is they close their eyes. And, you know, even though they're not training, they're visualizing each turn, each turn. They're not doing it. They're not do on physically on the slopes, but their brain recognizes by them visualizing it. The brain can't tell the difference between what's real, doing it on the slopes, or be them visualizing it as well. And I heard this really fun uh, story. Now, many of you probably know who this fellow is. I um, mean, actually, uh, you know, I'm not condoning MMA or, or ultimate fighting, but guys, well, I want you to type in the chat box if you recognize who this fellow is. I'm going to take a little drink while you're typing this in. Anyone? Anyone? I'll well, make sure you guys are all with me. Conor McGregor. There you go. And he actually just won. He just won his, his, this fight this past weekend. I never saw it. But but how about this? How about what did the fight last? 40 seconds, 45 seconds. Just imagine that you flew all the way to Vegas, paid all those thousands and thousands of dollars to get that to get a ticket for that. And the fight lasts 45 seconds. Yeah, <laughs> I think I'd be a little bit upset about that. But here, but here's the fun story. Um, and I heard this just recently, and I thought it would be very apropos, uh, appropriate for, for tonight's presentation. So here was Conor McGregor when he was visualizing himself being the world champion as a uh, MMA fighter. He visualized so clearly and intently about the belts, and he visualized two belts on his, each of his shoulders because he visualized that he was going to be the world champion of two weight classes. And when he went through in this fight, he would get two belts put on his shoulders and he visualized that and he visualized it, and all of a sudden it came true in one of the tur in, in one of the events he actually became the champion in two different weight classes and they came up and they presented him with a belt and they put it on and he goes whoa 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 stop guys I need the second belt you don't know how many how many times I have visualized getting two belts and I need two belts in order to do this. So one of the organizers had to go out into the one of the other people. They grabbed a second belt so Conor McGregor could put a second belt over his shoulder so he could fulfill upon his dream. Now, that is a vivid vision of what you want, what he wanted to create to become a champion in, in being as a, as a performance athlete. Okay. So now how clear, I'm going to ask you, how clear is your vivid vision? Do you visualize it to the point where you got need to have two belts on each one of your shoulders? So why is this important? Um, truly, and we're going to talk about this in a business concept, is it truly is a blueprint, a blueprint for your business. For many of you guys, you're real estate investors and maybe you're flippers and home builders and, and you build and you construct things and do renovations. Would you ever go and start a renovation project or build a house without a blueprint? I, no, you wouldn't. You actually need a blueprint. The vision for this, the vivid vision is your blueprint to build this. All the stakeholders in your business need to be on the same page. And some of you might go, but Russ, there's only me. I'm the only person in my business. Well, you need to be on the same page about what your vision is. But here's the thing is when you start going out and you start talking to um, mortgage brokers and you start talking to realtors and you go start talking to property managers and you start talking to other people, you need to have a very clear vision of what you want to create. Um, an example here, I'm going to share uh, two examples here. I'm not sure if Mike, is Mike Bug on the line? If you are Mike, just jump in and, and type yes. 
Um, the other person, Ben, Ben Liang, Ben created a PowerPoint presentation deck about what his vision is, his financial plan. And he sent it off to his accountant. He sent it off to his mortgage broker and he sent it off to his realtor that he wanted to work with and just said, here's what I'm trying to accomplish. Those stakeholders are, you are now to them someone more than just another transaction. You're a person who has a vision. You've got a, a something compelling to drive forward to. Um, here's the thing that typically people do is sometimes business owners and entrepreneurs, we get frustrated. Um, we get frustrated because we think so loudly. Like, honestly, we're thinking so loudly. We go, well, why isn't everybody on the same page as me. I'm thinking it really loud, right? It, it's it's one of the biggest thing that entrepreneurs have is they actually think it and it's in their head and they actually don't communicate it to enough people around. The people in your life, the key stakeholders, your spouses, your partners, your business partners, all this, they can't see inside your head. So what you need to do is you need to bring the vision to life and you need to share it. You need to, sorry for the term, but you need to preach it from the mountaintop sometimes when it comes to this vivid vision and it will eliminate those frustrations. Okay, so here's how you do this for your vivid vision to really start with. I would suggest you go someplace inspiring. Now, you don't need to go to Hawaii or, or go to the ski slopes. Just go someplace, maybe away from things, right? Go there, relax. Maybe you just need to meditate on things. Maybe you just want to have your mind drift on a few things. Truly, what I'm, 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 in, I'm encouraging you to do is to jump into your time machine and put yourself three years into the future. I'm putting your, I want you to go there. I want you to, um, to put yourself into the role of whom you're going to become in three years. Now, I actually did a blog post just recently. And for some of you, if you saw the, um, acceptance speech by Tom Hanks on the Golden Globes, where he talked about go there. I thought it was just so brilliant. I, 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 it really resonated with me on many levels because sometimes you need to go to places before you've actually have been to those places in order for you to prepare yourself to get there. I hope that makes sense, but you really just need to go there. So what I'm going to tell you, here's the, the exercise on how it's described to me and how I've done this. Put yourself three years into the future. So it's 2023. Okay. I want you to look around. I want you to see. I want you to describe. I want you to have all your sensories. I want you to think about what your business looks like. Is there employees? Are there, um, you know, hundreds of doors? Is there thousands of doors? Is there, you know, um, you're having meetings with your accountants and your lawyers. I want you, are you in an office? Are you now out of your home? What are you, are you teaching this? Are you, you know, have you created your own uh, community and now you're a real estate leader? Like really describe it, put some energy into it. And then from there, what you're going to just do is you're just going to just start creating a rough rudimentary mind map. And it doesn't have to be anything uh, uh, fantastic. It could honestly, guys, it could just be just notes on a page. It could just be doodles. It could be whatever. But I want you just to start creating a mind map. A couple other things to do to get you into the state to do this is I want you to think about what are other people saying? Like truly, what are people saying? Like, what is your portfolio size? You know, one of the things you might want to do is you might actually want to write the press report. Like if someone was interviewing you, Okay. If somebody, if you were a guest on somebody's blog or you were a guest on my podcast three years from now, and we're now celebrating our three millionth download in, in three years, what does your portfolio look like? What are we going to talk about with your portfolio? What are we going to talk about, about how you're contributing to others? What are we going to talk about, about how this is more than just the money that you're making? You're actually inspiring a next generation of kids and, and a new generation of real estate investors to follow in the steps that you're gone. And you've now have created a new leadership training program. Like what is the cover story of your company? Okay. What is the cover story of your, of your business? Now, for some of you are going, geez, Russell, I haven't even bought my first place yet. What are you talking about? A cover story of success magazine. If you truly have those goals, you have to first rehearse being there. You have to put yourself into the future. You have to, you have to just really own it. You have to step into it and you have to go there. Okay. You have to go to the future because if you can't see it and you can't believe it, 
you will have no chance of trying to convince somebody else to come on your team with you or to convince anybody else to come uh, along this crazy journey with you as well. Okay, so you have to go there first. So now that you've done this brainstorming exercise and you've you've taken the time to think about what it looks like and what it feels like and what your team are and you have a department, you have an acquisitions manager and you have a property management company and you have an education division, right? You've been there. Now that you've done that, start creating a draft of a story. And all you have to do, all I'm asking for you here right now is to create bullet points, just a bullet point about what you want. Organize just a few of those rough notes, get a first draft. And then what I would suggest you do is you hire a either a professional writer or a graphic designer. For example, on the screen right now is actually not my vivid vision. It's, it's part of my vivid vision, but that's actually my core values in my life. I actually just went and brainstormed and wrote out all these these uh, these things and I, my core values, and I just kept writing out statements and statements and statements about what my core values were. And eventually I honed it down into one statement to inspire, encourage, and come from a place of love. That's my core value. Okay. But what I'm telling you is take this through rough notes. And I just hired somebody to just create a little infographic. Now I have that on my website. I have my core value statement on my website as part of my bio. It's actually part of my email address. It's actually one of the things how I sign off on a lot of things. It's actually how I live my life is to inspire, encourage, and come from a place of love. Now, what I'm trying to get for you guys is take that step to hire a professional, either a good graphic design artist or even um, a professional writer. Now, they're not that expensive. Guys, write this down and maybe I'll post it in for you. Um, there's a resource I've just started using and it's called Free Up. And I believe it's with three E's. F-R-E-E-E up, free up. It's for freelancers that you can hire out and you just post jobs. I'll post the link for everybody if you're interested. Um, I've started hiring people in there for, for, I was shocked at some of the skill sets some of these people have, like professional writers for 20, 25 bucks an hour. And you know, they're fast, you know, for 50 bucks, $75, I can actually get an entire story written for something, right? So these resources are all over the place. Okay, so create that first draft. Then after that, what you want to do is you're starting to build a magnet. You have this first draft built. The cool thing about a magnet is magnet does two things. It actually attracts and it also repels. Okay. The cool thing about your vivid vision is number one is it's going to attract people. But more importantly, I think than the people that it attracts, it actually repels people. People might just go, what's this guy talking about? What's this guy smoking? Things like that. Right. So here's the thing is it both attracts and it repels people at the same time. Have it engaging, have it exciting, have people buy into the energy that you're bringing, have, you know, people picking up what you're putting down. You want to be in complete alignment with all the people on your team. That's probably the first thing you need to do is you need to have all the people on your team in 100% alignment to what the vivid vision is. And the first person that needs to be in part of the, what the vivid vision is, is probably your, our significant others. Okay. Um, if our significant others are not clear on what the vivid vision is and what the picture that we're trying to accomplish, that is step number one. Okay. Actually, I'm going to back it up and correct myself. Step number one is you need to be clear in your vivid vision. You need to be clear in what you're trying to accomplish yourself. Then our significant others, then our suppliers and people around us. And what we're trying to do here, guys, is we're trying to create a movement. We're trying to enroll people into our business because you can, we will not be able to accomplish these big, giant, vivid, vivid visions on our own. It truly is the formula is we start with I is most people are just solopreneurs. And then we get into the we where we have a few people and maybe a team. And then it's a they. It's I, we, they. I, you start doing all the work first. You bring somebody on and we start doing it together. And then eventually you hire enough people on your team that they start doing it. And then the next step after that is you start becoming the chairman of the board or you start consulting. I, we, they, chairman of the board. So what we need to do is you need to get good at enrolling people into uh, this thing. So I found this, and this is a, a video that I share. I, I actually took from somebody else that used the same thing. It was actually Cameron Harold who shared this, who I got a lot of this information from. Um, I'm going to share a video with you. So here's an example of a guy. Um, you know, if you guys, if you're watching this, I hope you can see it. It's pretty awkward, isn't it? This guy is sitting there. He's on a hill. 
He's by himself. And some of us, we're sitting there in our office and we're creating a video and we're doing these Facebook Lives and we're analyzing properties and we feel like this guy on the hill all by ourselves. Nobody. And all of a sudden, you know what? Somebody else is coming and they want to dance with me. Oh, look at this. Let's, and you start to roll and then you start encouraging this fellow, the, the other people to come in there. And you can start, and you can tell how it starts getting really awkward. And then all of a sudden, a few more people come in, right? And people are starting to buy into your vision. It's infectious. People see um, the story that you shared. Then all of a sudden, just maybe a few more people start coming involved in, in this, right? And then you get maybe your first employee and your first team member. And then all of a sudden now you have a marketing department. And all of a sudden after that, you maybe have a social media coordinator that started to manage your things. You get so big and large and things like that. And then all of a sudden you now start having um, uh, other, other team members. And all of a sudden, look at this more people start enrolling into your vision. More people start gaining momentum. Then you start becoming um, known that you're coming to and you're an expert in your strategy. You're an expert in your niche. You become somebody who is a person who is creating a movement. This person started all by himself and now he's starting to enroll people into what he's doing. Now, you guys probably know the ending of this story and I could probably have it go. It probably goes for another 30 seconds. The entire hill of people are joining in with this guy dancing and it took three minutes mm. it might feel really awkward at first when you first get started it might feel really awkward for you sharing a big giant hairy vision of what you want to have to do within your real estate business people might even call you crazy right but look at this within three minutes he had all these people that are now starting to join in in a movement. Now that is a leader, as Ben Liang says uh, on the comment. So whoo, I'm fired up, guys. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> I get excited just talking about it. I, I truly do. When you start talking about vision and being a leader and enrolling people into things, it just is exciting. It truly is. But now here's the thing. I don't want us to get stuck on a big giant vision. I don't want us to get stuck on just dreaming because honestly, if I was to be honest about myself, sometimes I get stuck in the vision and I get stuck in the dream and I sit there and I go, holy moly, that dream is so big. It's so far out there. I have no idea how the hell I'm going to do it. And then I shut down and then I do nothing. Okay, so what we really need to do is we need to take the vision and now we need to start putting some day-to-day -day actions in place. So remember in the RPM system, R stands for rehearsal. You're rehearsing in advance what you're looking to accomplish. The P is now we're going to start doing some planning. I'm going to talk to you about a quick... Um, Two quick concepts here first, and I've, I've modeled this from a couple different sources. Um, part of it was a little bit from Les Hewitt, but part of it was from another person who I read uh, an article on. It's talking about the air game versus the ground game, okay? So we're going to talk about the ground game first, okay? The ground game is really what you talk about is your day-to-day, -day, the things you do every day on a day-to-day -day activity. It's the work you do naturally, right? You you go to, let's say you, you go to a job and you have a job. It's the job you do on a day-to-day -day basis. It could be within your real estate business. It could be within, um, if you're a lab technician or a nurse or an engineer or what you do for your day-to-day -day job. It's the work you do naturally. OK, it's your job. It's essentially the ground game is the stuff you do on a regular day to day basis. OK, you don't have to think about it. We get so many th th those things in the ground game on a day to day basis. This next part is called the air game. And most people don't do this. So what I'm encouraging you to do is step out of your life for a moment. I'm encouraging you to get a little bit of perspective, have a little bit of vision. Take a look at your life from 30 thousand feet question what's important and then what i'm telling you to do is one of the best exercises i've done and that was one of the coaching that i had from les hewitt is to take one hour a week to think big picture vision to take one hour a week to think about your business to work on your business to work on your vision vision planning and i lock that sucker in on my calendar and it's it's non-negotiable time that i will take one hour a week to do some big picture thinking and what do you do during that time is you start doing some brainstorming right you go someplace inspiring i have a place that i go within our house that i sit there and i will meditate and i will relax 
I just let ideas start free flowing. And then here's what we're going to do. And remember, we're in the planning stages of things. I want you to start thinking about what you want to accomplish in one year. We've done the vivid vision for five, you know, three years out. Okay. We've put ourselves into it. Now we're going to come back to reality a little bit about what do you want to have accomplished in one year? Now, here is, um, I personally don't do this, but I have done this many, many years and I've evolved this a little bit. But for some of you, you might be going, well, what do I free flow on? What are the categories of, 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 um, big bucket categories that I want to have within my life? And for many of you, I've rec- recommended the book, The Power of Focus. In that book, there's actually an amazing, which I will actually share this form with you. I hope you guys can see it. It's called my personal plan, my personal master plan. And here are the categories that Les Hewitt breaks out into. If you're, if you're struggling on what categories of your goals that you want to do, go with these. What are your financial goals? What are your financial targets? Remember, one year. That's all we want is one year out. What are your career and business goals? Those are could be completely different things. Your business can be completely different from your financial. What are some of your fun goals? What do you? How many weeks of vacation do you want to take off? Um, I remember when I was working with Mike, Mike Bug. I don't think Mike's back here uh, yet, but um, we identified something that he liked to have was we called deck days of how many days he spends on the deck with his wife because they love having one of his core values is to live a life that you don't have to ever go on a vacation or live a life that you don't need to go on a vacation from. So we are, we designed something called deck days of when he just goes out on his deck and he has a wonderful night and he actually measured how many deck days he would do on, on an annual basis. Health and fitness, like what is your goals? What is your fitness goals? How many times are you going to go to yoga? How many times are you going to exercise? What do you have? Is it a weight target? Is it a, you're going to go vegan or or vegetarian? (coughs) Sorry. What are your health and fitness goals? Then the last three categories and buckets are relationship goals, personal goals, and what are your contribution? So here is the form. This is the form that is on. Now, my book may be different because I think this was an original old version you know, what year was this one written? This one was autographed. This is actually, I got autographed by Mark Victor Hansen, but this is on page number in my book, 87. So some of you, if you have this book, um, by all means, I encourage you to take, take a look at that. So here's what you do from here is you take those categories of financial, career and business, fun time, health and fitness, relationship, personal contribution, and you th- talk about three specific goals you want to have in each one of those areas for a one-year time frame. Three specific goals. And then you take the next step to that is you essentially ask the reason why do you want to accomplish those three things? Three goals of those seven buckets. So you essentially will have 21 goals and then you have three reasons why you want to have accomplished, and then you track it if, if you're going to accomplish it or not. So now we've set aside a plan. Okay. We now we've rehearsed in the future about what we want to do. We've now put a starting to put a plan in place for this. Now we've walked away and we've got our one year master plan. And then the most important part about this is it's wonderful to have this master plan and have the greatest, you could have the greatest goal sheet in the world. If you actually don't do anything every day to accomplish it, it might as well, you might as well just burn the paper. You really truly must. So the next part of the RPM, which is the, in my world, the most important part is the movement. You actually need to daily take action each and every day to move closer to the plan you put down there. So here's the, here's the list we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about every day. And we're not going to talk, we're going to talk about you guys building a plan that you're going to do five things, five things on a day to day basis every single day to get you closer to your goals. Okay. We're going to talk about some daily action. I'm going to share with you the tool I use for, for this. So here's the thing. If, if you just do this one step, if you do it, and I don't care if it's in the book that I'm going to share with you and the resource I use. If you just every day and you just even have a piece of paper, you, you're you clear in what you're trying to accomplish and you write out five things you're going to do today to get closer to those goals and you do those five things. If you do those things every single day, 
Now, sure, you're, I know for a fact we're not going to win every day. We're not going to get them all done every day. Some days we'll lose. Some days we'll only get one done. Some days we'll get three. But if you win the day and you get five things done that will move you closer to your goals, and then tomorrow you do it again and you get another five, and you get another five, and you do uh, and you win the week, and then you do a stack enough wins of each of the week, you win the weeks, you then start winning the month, you win more months, you start winning the year, you will not recognize yourself in one year's time, in two years time, in three years time, if you just do one thing and that is accomplish five things to get you closer to your goals on a daily basis. Okay. So here's the tools I use. And some of you have maybe have seen this. Some of you might even be using this. Um, I, I am a big fan. I've gone through multiple planners and multiple journals and, and I even cont contemplated about, you know, building my own and stuff like that. But, you know, quite honestly, why not just use somebody that's already working? Because the most important part about a planner is that you actually use it. If it sits on a shelf and collects dust and you actually never look at it, it's, it's just a waste. So I've recommended this book a couple times to everyone, High Performance Habits, Brendan Bouchard. He also has a planner that is built out in there as well called the High Performance Planner. This is what I personally use to hold myself accountable on a daily basis to get the job done, to get things done in my life. Now, if any of you have this, I highly recommend you use it. If you don't have a planner and, you, and you're looking for one and you're in the market, this is one that I personally use, so obviously I endorse it, okay? Um, so really there's some really cool things in here. There does some things like quarterly planning, there's monthly planning, there's weekly planning, there's a whole bunch of planning in here. Um, but to me, the most important part of this whole thing is actually a daily plan that you, that each and every day it maps out what you need to do to get closer to your goals. Now I'm going to should be very open and vulnerable for you. Um, don't hold my chicken scratch writing against me, but this is my plan. This is from today. As you can tell, January 1st, 20, uh, January, or sorry, January 22nd, 2020. Here is my plan for the day. And I'm going to walk you through how I kind of set this up. Now, don't hold it against me. As I mentioned, I do have bad handwriting. So the first thing I do is, let's see if I can do this. The first thing I do is I do this. On a daily basis, I start off with, um, let me get a pen here, pen. I do this part first, okay? I actually, this part here in the middle is the time blocks. These are things that are in my calendar that are blocked off that I have to get to that these are time blocks, okay? Um, for example, today, I did a live broadcast from 11.30 to 1 with Erwin, and I have this webinar, and I also blocked in time to prepare for both of them. Okay, so those things that I did, so these ones here is the things I do first. That's number one, is I will block off the time that is locked in my calendar that I have to um, committed to. And some of these things are committed to me for months in advance. Okay, months in advance. The second thing I do, number two, is up here, is that I have a message to myself. I give myself a message. And sometimes this can change on a daily basis, but right now I've been actually fixated on one powerful message that I'm repeating to myself on a day-to-day -day basis. And I'm gonna read it to you guys here as well. It's, and this one has been built from, uh, it started with uh, the fellow who wrote The Miracle Morning. Um, oh, what's his name again? Miracle Morning. I'm at a loss. It'll come to me. The guy who, who wrote The Miracle Morning and, and talking about like an affirmation, it's kind of an affirmation. And this is, I'm going to read it for you guys. I'm willing to do whatever it takes to impact 1 million real estate investors' lives to buy one more property by 2035. Regardless of result, no matter what, there are no options. And then I write a little acronym called B-A-M-N. And that stands for by any means necessary, a Malcolm X quote. Hell Elrod, that's it, Latif, thank you. Um, I'm willing to, so that's what I do as an affirmation for myself each and every day, okay? So that's the next thing. Then the next thing I do, this one here, is I actually, this is part three, I change it to my four priorities. So my four buckets that I, as my priorities in my life, are to impact one million real estate investors' lives. 
Number two is I have a, a goal and a bucket to grow my database of contacts. Because if you have an asset of database and people in your contact database, you, you actually have a business that could be sold down the road and you will have a, a, an option to have um, do more business the more people we have in your database. Bucket number three for me is to create, distribute, and sell inspiring content that impacts people's lives. And number four, priority for me, is property acquisitions and portfolio management. So here's the thing. Those are my four priorities. So I need to have activities on a daily basis that get me closer to those four priorities. Okay, so the next step I do is here's step number four is I do tasks that absolutely must be done today. Now, I'm not talking about a task to me is not go buy groceries. A task does not drop car off for oil change. A task is not... Um, so those things happen. That, that Those things must get done. So I, But I don't put it in this list. In this list is only tasks that get me closer to my goals and my dreams of the priorities. So, for example, number one on my list today was to uh, prepare for a live broadcast, which I prepared for this morning. Number two was to deliver the live broadcast, which I delivered today, if some of you guys saw that. Well, part number three was the webinar that you guys are on tonight was to prepare for it powerfully. That was step number three. Step number four was to deliver the webinar. And then step number five is to jump onto social media and support people answering questions and post something inspiring. Look at how this, guys, see how this activities of these five things are in alignment to my day-to-day -day acti my day -to -day priorities. That is key thing is that you want to have alignment to what you want to have, right? That is how you know you're moving in the right direction, that you're doing effective work. And then this part over here is number, step number five. I will actually write down... People I need to refer to, this person here is Randall, who is actually my accountant. Or year end time, I need to connect with Randall. Uh, park insurance, I need to have a conversation with my insurance broker. And then free up, I needed to have a response to one of the people that I'm hiring as a resource. Okay. Then step number six is this part over here where I have a morning mindset. And it's just a, a list of, what is that? 10 questions that just help get me into a good frame of mind, right? You know, what's one thing I can get excited today? Sharing inspiring content. That excites me. That's exciting me. What's uh, one word that I can do is, you know, who needs me on my A-game? The Raising Capital Academy members need me on my A-game. What's something that might trip me up today? Property vacancies. I actually have a couple of vacancies that's going to trip me up a little bit. How do I fix that one thing? I deal with them one at a time, right? I just deal with it. Um, who could have a, a note or a gift or a little surprise? I think the Raising Capital Academy members that are out tonight get the best of the best because you guys made a commitment to come out here tonight. What's one thing I could do that's a little out of my comfort zone? Live broadcasting. Man, I've had some fear around hitting that stupid go live button on, on live broadcasting, but I did it anyways today. At the end of the day, how do I feel? Fulfilled. Okay. Then because this is today, I haven't finished it. This is step number seven. I will then do this evening journal. I will recap my day and then I'll give myself a score out of how I did on the eight, on the um, six high productivity habits. Now, here's the thing, guys. I do this every day, every single day. I will fill this out and I will recap and I will do it because I'm in complete alignment and I hold myself accountable to each and every day of doing this work. Okay. That's what we really want to have is just to hold yourself accountable to the work. Now, can you guys see how this is all aligned? That's what I'm mainly trying to get you guys to do, think about is your actions need to align with your priorities, which align with your affirmation, which gets you, then you need to get yourself into a good headspace for the day. Who do you need to follow up with? And then each and every day you give yourself a grade and you keep referring to this. I refer to this book probably five or six times a day. It's on my desk. It doesn't go anywhere with, with anywhere with, I don't, sorry, let me slow down. I don't go anywhere without it. It is truly lives by my side because that is how I hold myself accountable. All right. So let's wrap it up here, guys. And I'm going to open it up to some Q&A if you're interested here. I got one more slide and then one final message. And I think we've been going for about 40, 45 minutes, give or take, um, on the presentation. But we're into it for about an hour. So I just have um, some final quick steps. And then what we'll do is we will, uh, I'll open it up to some questions. Okay, so here's just some quick next steps for you guys. Number one, 
is carve out some time and block one hour. So, so two, two steps. This first one is two steps in one. Remember, you need to carve out some time to do your vivid vision. Okay, so that's a block of time to carve that out. Number two is go into your calendar each week and carve out big picture thinking time where you're just thinking big vision, big picture and block one hour a week, each and every week and treat it. You know, <laughs> sorry, guys, if this is a really graphic analogy, but this is a something that a coach and mentor shared with me uh, way back in the day. Block that one hour per week and give it the priority you would give diarrhea. Hang on. No, I'm, I'm joking. Like, seriously, what kind of priority would you give diarrhea? It's non-negotiable. You take care of it, right? So block that one hour a week to give some thinking time with things. Complete your vivid vision. If you guys want to share your vivid visions, man, I would love, maybe we'll just have a, a webinar where we just all share our vivid visions. And maybe you post it into the Facebook groups and we just share it because we're all going to be cheering each other on. Create your vivid vision. Have some feedback. Get the group. Let's all cheer each other on to create our vivid vision. Um, I will post for everybody the Power of Fo Focus worksheet, this thing right here, which I share with you. I will post that for everybody if you want to download that and you can use that. Um, and I highly recommend you pick up one of these high performance planners. Right now, if it's not a high performance planner, it's not the one I recommend. I really, I, like I said, I don't have attachment to which one you use. I have attachment that you do the work every single day that it's in alignment to what your top priorities are. Okay. And truly, if I can, my number one point I want to get across to you guys is if you truly complete five things every single day to get yourself closer to your goals and your mission and your vision in a year's time, in two years time, in three years time, you will not recognize who you are. You will be a completely different person if you just do this one thing, and that is to complete five things in alignment to your top goals that align with your vivid vision on going forward. And guys, that is the RPM method of goal setting within the Raising Capital Academy. Who's revved up? Let's hear it. I'm going to see if you guys are all revved up. I'm fired up. I don't know about you. <laughs> okay, guys. So a couple questions came through. Any tips on forming the habit of using the planner? Um, here, so my, my flippant answer to that would be just do it. <laughs> Right? But I'm, I will give you some tactical things that you can do to do it. I, I, I would highly recommend um, you pick the same place every day to where you do your planner. Um, you pick the same time to do it. You actually maybe even have the same music playing when you do it. For me, and I'm just going to share with you what how I start my day and how I plan my day. I start off my day either as either a 5 a.m. or 6 a.m. depending on when I wake up. And I usually never sleep any longer than 6 a.m. If I sleep past 6 a.m., I've slept in. So it's either 5 or 6. The first thing I do when I wake up is I hopefully I don't disrupt my wife too much, but I actually will do a meditation. I will meditate. Uh, for many of you, um, I, do, I use um, a Muse headband, which I wear a Muse headband. And I actually will do some guided meditation for probably for 15 minutes minimum. And then after that, I actually have an, an app on my phone called Primed Mind. Hang on here. Let me just back up. You can see it. So there's my mind training. Primed Mind, Muse, and Focus at Will. Those are three resources I use. So I actually will do a, 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 a hypnotherapy session where a, a fellow walks me through for a 14-minute process to wake up. It's essentially you get into a really calm state, he takes you down and then really towards the halfway through it, he just revs you up and you're ready to just jump out of bed and you're ready to just get going. Okay. So I do a guided meditation. I will do a hypnotherapy. And then the next thing I do before I get out of bed is I actually will do a form of gratitude. And that is I give my wife a back rub. I will, uh, I think in the past, in 10 years that we've been married, I would bet less than 10 times that I haven't given my wife a back rub. In the morning, it's just part of my gratitude practice of paying gratitude to one of the most important people in my life. And I just give my wife a, a back rub each and every day. OK, so that's stuff that I get up and that's now I'm getting up. And then as soon as I come down, first thing I do is I grab a glass of water and I make myself a cup of coffee. 
And then I sit down. The first thing I do before I open Facebook, before I open anything else, before I read any emails, I do this first thing in the morning and it's non-negotiable. Now I'm telling you, have I, have I missed the day? Yeah, absolutely. I'm not, nobody's perfect, but I would bet I'm in the 95 percentile of doing this each and every day, even on weekends, even on holidays to the point too. This sets me up for the day. If I don't do this, if I don't go through that routine that I talked about, I know uh, I know it'll impact my day. It truly impacts my day if I don't do my meditation, if I don't do my hypnotherapy, if I don't practice gratitude, if I don't uh, do my if I don't do my daily planner and I plan my day accordingly, um, I'm setting myself up to fail for the day. I truly am. Okay. Now I'm not guaranteed that I every day, um, and I'm gar- not guaranteed every single day that I do. Um, um, I finish the goals and I finish everything on the list, but I at least start the day having it done. Okay. So, so to answer your question, Ben, simple ways to do it is, is get into a routine and get into a habit and get into a ritual of doing it the same place, same time every day and, um, get it to a point eventually, like it's going to be like brushing your teeth. It's just something you do. Okay. It is just something that I do every day is to plan my day. Okay. It's non-negotiable. Brendan asked the question, I see how routine in general would be beneficial to my process. That's step number one for me. I have the same planner, but it is, it is free of ink. Well, here, here's what I'm going to suggest, Brendan. Um, tomorrow's a new day. Um, maybe even tonight. So here's what I'm going to suggest you do tonight, Brendan. Before you go to bed tonight, as soon as you get off the phone tonight, let's keep some momentum going. I'm going to recommend you pick up the planner tonight and that sucker is going to be cracked open and you're going to at least do the evening journal section and you're going to do that tonight and tomorrow morning you're going to make a commitment to do that. Okay, so start with what you got. Start like this, you know, I trust me, I'm the hardest person to beat myself up on not doing things. I, I really am. And sometimes we just need to be give ourselves a little bit of grace. But at the same time, let's giddy up right? The time is now. The time is now because I know when you put that work to that vivid vision that you want to have, Brendan, um, you'll sit there and go, uh, there's no time to mess around anymore. It's time to get serious about this. It's time to, it's time to buckle down. Let's get to work. Um, ben piped in with a comment about writing things down um, is better than typing. I 100% agree. You need to make it sensory. You need to make it visceral. You need to draw and 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 doodle and you need to write i think writing is is a lost art in the in the form of people taking notes and typing and stuff like that i think um it's a lost art of of um journaling and writing things and i go through journals like crazy now some i think some of you may have said i made a um I make an Instagram post, maybe an Instagram or Facebook of within the last year alone i've gone through a stack this high let me get in the camera. Probably this high of journals and books of just ideas and things that I've written. Okay. So I think it's a lost art. But here's the thing is take the dreams and execute against them. Take the dreams, take the doodles, take the plans, take the framework, take the conversations, but you must do something with them. Okay. And the follow through is the most important part. Thank you. I'm, I'm grateful. I'm grateful for you guys, everybody who's a part of this community. Honest to goodness, guys, I think we're just getting started. Um, there are so many things. Like I told you, my vision truly is to impact a million people's lives. I want to inspire a million real estate investors over the next 15 years. Now, for some of you, um, this might be new news to you. I shared it at my last, the last webinar at the end in December, which the the replay will be ready. But I truly have a vision that I want to impact a million investors' lives in the next 15 years. And and the, the concept I'm coining is to buy one more property. So think about it for a second. If, if most real estate investors that I talk to, um, the biggest regrets that real estate investors have, let's do this. You guys, I want you guys to, I want you guys to play along with me. Um, you guys are all real estate investors. Jump into the chat box and tell me what you would think would be the two biggest regrets that real estate investors would have of maybe owning real estate for for being in the game for 20 years. What do you think the, the, the biggest regrets, two biggest regrets? 
So I want you guys to play along. I want to, I'm just doing some case study testing with you guys as well. I'm going to take a break and take a little drink. I want you guys to type in there. Latif says not buying early and not buying more. Ding, ding, ding. You, the two biggest regrets of people that I talk to as real estate investors is number one is they didn't start soon enough. And number two is they didn't buy enough. Okay. Um, so here's, and here's the exercise I get people to do. And I walk sometimes some of my private coaching clients through this. Um, guys, and I'm going to get you guys to do this exercise for me right now. Take, take um, one property, just one property, maybe the last property you bought or the next property you're going to buy, okay? I want you to take a piece of paper and I want you to write down on that piece of paper how much that property, uh, purchase price of that property was, okay? I'm going to write mine down. Mine is $450,000 was the last suited house I bought. I actually bought three of them this summer, Okay. $450,000. Okay. If you held that property for 15 years and you eventually paid it off free and clear, that that property was free and clear and paid off and the asset value did not go up in $1, you just have a $450,000 pension plan that's been created in 15 years that you probably, you know, most of it's been paid off by your tenant. Now, in that same time frame, once you pay off all the mortgages and all the debt on all these properties, you actually have an income stream. And in this case study, you take your gross rents on that property. So in this case, gross rents on that property is $3,300 gross per month. Okay. Take $3,300 per month times 0.7 is I'm going to round it up to $2,400 a month. $2,400 times 12 is $28,000, 28K. Okay. That one property that I bought in 15 years, once free and clear, will be worth, if the no appreciation, will be worth almost a half a million dollars and will be worth almost $30,000 a year in income to me. Okay, so here's the exercise, guys. I want you to take your last property you bought or the next one you're going to buy and write down the purchase price. I want you then to take the gross income that that asset will create for you, multiply that gross in by, by 0.7, and that will be your monthly net, okay? Take that monthly net times 12. And if you guys have those numbers, I want you to put it into the chat box for me right now. I just shared with you uh, 450,000 and 28K. That's per property. Okay. Um, Brendan said 25.2. What would the asset value be worth if it was free and clear, Brendan? For you? 450,000. So, Brendan, for, and let's just use you as an example. What does one more property equal to you, Brendan? It equals out to $450,000 and $25,000 and $25, and $25, a year in income, right? Um, what if somebody came along and inspired you to buy one more? What if someone came along and inspired you to get some more tools and resources and, and tools in the, in, the, in the toolbox to inspire you to buy another one? And that inspired you to buy another one. And then you turned around and you inspired the next person and inspired the next person. And lo and behold, in 15 years, a million people were inspired to buy one more property. That is the game I'm playing for. That is what's getting me out of bed. That is what is firing me up to doing this, okay, is to inspire 1 million people to buy one more property. And because here's the cool thing, when you buy one more and you learn a new tool, you won't stop with just one. Right. Then you started helping and helping others. No, I'm sorry if I'm getting preachy preachy on my on my soapbox, but I'm using you guys as a little bit of a sounding board at the same time to to share with what my new game I'm playing, share with you the new vision I have of what I'm trying to do. And um, I'm going to need some help. I need lots of help. It scares, you know, part of my language here for a second, it scares the shit out of me and I don't know how I'm going to do it. But if not me, who? Right. And if not us, who? We're going to do this together. All right, enough of that. Okay, guys, if there's no more questions, then I will stand off my soapbox. No, you want to have fun with that same exercise? 
factor in a 2% appreciation value into that. And those $450,000 assets now become almost $600,000. And that $30,000 income stream almost becomes 40 some thousand, right? If you factor in just even, just if, if you just factor in inflation alone, right? Now that is a fun game to play, right? If you compound it 2% per year for 15 years, those assets are instead of 450 now almost becomes, I think it's 620 is the number, I think. Can't remember. It might be a little less, but now that is when you start getting some fun, and then you start getting some markets that are really crazy. Yeah, things get a little little bit cuckoo from there. But anyways, I'm gonna be putting together an exercise on that, guys, for you guys. I'm actually gonna be doing some training on that about. I'm calling it the one more property exercise, where you will maybe it's a little spreadsheet, and it will be just. Type in purchase price, type in gross rents, type in your, your um, expense operating ratios, and free and clear in 15 years, this would be worth what? Fun game to play. It actually puts a little perspective on this whole game of real estate, what we're doing. All right. I think I've said goodbye three times, but I just keep getting excited about some more things. So guys, um, my final message to you is, is as follows, is um, I'm truly honored and truly blessed for each and every one of you for coming out tonight. Um, this is what gives me rocket fuel to do this, to just, I love helping and supporting each and every one of you guys on your journeys. And it warms my heart that you guys become successful. It's not about a portfolio of real estate I'm buying. It's nothing to do with that. The reason why I want to do this is I want to have each and every one of you guys be a success. And then I want you to pay that forward to the next person to help them be a success. And that's how truly we can change the world. So with that being said, um, I want to sign off with guys, please live your life inspired, encouraged, and always come from a place of love. Okay, everybody. Have yourself a wonderful night. I sure hope you enjoyed this in-depth training video. And I applaud you for sticking around right to the very end. I believe in people that show up, put in the work, put in the time and effort should be rewarded. If you're interested in taking the next step, if you're interested in going deeper and mastering what you just learned about in this training video, I encourage you to check out the Raising Capital Academy. So if you have found that you've received some value from the YouTube channel, or maybe you've listened to a podcast, you're only scratching the surface. That truly is just one-tenth of one percent of all the content and materials that have been created that are waiting for you on the other side. So I encourage you to check out the Raising Capital Academy. There's more than 100 plus hours of video content, audio content, exclusive training material for those that are interested in taking the next step, those that are interested in going towards mastery, those that are interested in moving forward with velocity. So I would encourage you wherever you're watching this video, around this video will be a link where you can check out all the details of the Raising Capital Academy. After you've checked out all the details on that page and you're interested in moving forward with Velocity, click on the link that will take you towards the application. This is by application only. This is a community program and is for serious action takers only. So if you want to step up your game, if you have goals and dreams and aspirations for more, if you'd like to make a difference in the financial futures of the most important people in your life, I highly encourage you to check out the Raising Capital Academy. Click on that link and you'll be taken to the next step in the process to see if you qualify to take the next step forward for you. Hope to see you on the other side. Bye for now. Hey, I sure hope you enjoyed this video. If you are interested in moving forward with Velocity, if you're interested in being a successful real estate investor, only two simple next steps from here. Number one, below where you're watching this, there will be an opportunity for you to subscribe. And over here will be a hand-selected video for you to keep moving forward. Continue your journey forward. Just click on over here for that hand-selected video for you. And we'll see you on the other side. Thank you very much.